off their quarterback John Skelton who has been under duress just about every time he's dropped back. We'll see John in the Arizona offense here at the start. Glad you're with us today on Fox. This is Powell from inside the 10. And William Powell is spun down just across the 15 by Ryan Taylor. A nine yard return and here is Skelton Troy who won the job in camp. And during the preseason got hurt in week one. Now Cobb is hurt so Skelton's back in charge. Yeah, and even he admitted that it has been a frustrating year. Certainly the last four weeks have been frustrating for him in particular the last two weeks that he has started. Of course that game last week threw the ball 52 times and that's just not going to get it done. He's got to have some help within the running game. They've lost their top two running backs. One of them Beanie Wells they hope to get back in a few weeks. Changing it up at the line as Skelton drops back and completes. That's the tight end Hausler. And a small gain on first down of just two yards. And we look at this offense that comes in ranked second to last in the NFL. And this is the group with Batiste at left tackle and the rookie at right tackle that's really struggled. Well they have and then with Rich Ornberger making his second start at right guard the only two guys that they went into training camp with anticipating that they would be their starters that are playing here today is center Lyle Senline and then left guard Darren College. Second down and eight. Skelton floats it. Fitzgerald one handed catch but out of bounds. He shows the great hands but he was clearly out of bounds working on Tremont Williams it's third and eight. <laughs> he made this look rather routine didn't he. I mean clearly he's out of bounds but. You know so much is talked about the job that Larry Fitzgerald has done over the time of his career as. Skelton he's getting a little too accustomed to. Being on his back at the end of each passing attempt. That was Eric Walden who makes another start for the injured rookie Nick Perry it's third and eight. Just four men on the rush and down goes Skelton. Mike Neal gets the sack. And the Cardinals now have given up 40. By far the most across the NFL. Well they can't blame the tackles on this one. Mike Neal he's just able to get right by left guard Darren College and that's the inside pressure for the most part. Skelton has been protected inside. Because of their play as you said the edge rush has been what has been a problem for them. But that time you got Neil right in the face of Skelton he had no chance. College who was the starting left guard the year the Packers won it all in 2010. For Green Bay. Line drive punt Cobb he's dangerous. Room to run. Inside the 40. Gets a block. And out of bounds at the 20. Zastadil barely got it away in that line drive punt. A 28 yard return on a 39 yard punt and a great block by Ryan Taylor on the return by Randall Cobb. Here it is. Now you see the block by Ryan Taylor and, and I couldn't tell exactly who was the recipient of that hit Joe but he is still on the turf. That was a big time collision. It's a backup safety Rashad Johnson former third round pick from Alabama and he got plastered right here. I just never even saw it coming. And he got laid out and how about the special teams play for the Packers. Now Sean Slocum the opening kickoff they pin him inside the 20 on the 15 yard line to start that drive and then a big return there by Cobb. Mike McCarthy said that's been the best aspect of this team so far. Special teams and now down goes Rodgers. There were four Arizona Cardinals there and Calais Campbell was the first one but he wasn't alone. They tried to run a double move with Jordy Nelson coming back off of the hamstring injury and good coverage on the outside and he's trying to hold it and then go elsewhere with the ball but great inside pressure of their own by the Arizona Cardinals. Of course the Packers and the Cardinals come into this game defensively 
leading the league with the most sacks. Both Campbell and Dockett get credit for that sack at second and 20. And a handoff to Starks running right, nowhere to go. The knee is down, but he gets up and picks up two and a half, three yards, maybe four over the right side. That's it. So third and long coming up as Darrell Washington was there defending for Arizona. Here's the offensive line. And the backs and receivers, nice for Green Bay to have Jordy Nelson back. He missed last week with a bad hamstring. Third down and 16. 319. Rodgers, good protection, now gets out of there, throws. Has a man, but dropped. Randall Cobb was open, tried to adjust and couldn't make the catch inside the five. It's fourth down. Well, that was almost a heck of a play by Randall Cobb. You know, the Cardinals, third and long, they play coverage. They've got help with safeties over the top. And I think Aaron Rodgers saw color out in front of Cobb and, and just was afraid to lead him and tried to then pull him up. And it was almost a really nice catch. Cobb, who's become such a big part of this offense in his second year out of Kentucky. This one is missed by Mason Crosby, who has now missed five of his last nine. Hooked it, missed from 32 last week, misses from 44 this week, and the Packers waste. Field goal kicker for the Packers, Mason Crosby has hit a rough stretch. Packers get nothing out of that good return by Cobb. They're now trying to run it. Good for one as LaRod Stevens howling. A.J. Hawk is there defensively for Green Bay. And now we look at this Packers defense, which according to Dom Capers is trending up. That 3-4 look. And they have 17 of their overall 26 sacks coming from the linebacker position. We miss Charles Woodson out for the break in his collarbone. Second down and nine. Skelton out of the backfield. Stevens howling, and he's got a first down. First of the game, and he is good for 14 yards over the left side. House was out there for Green Bay. Well, of course, when you're going to play the Cardinals, you've got to be aware then of Larry Fitzgerald and where he's going to line up. There was a time where you could you could determine that he was going to be on the outside. That started changing a few years back. Working him in the slot a little bit more makes it a little bit more difficult to double him, but he's going to have the attention of the Packers in this game. Future Hall of Famer, you have to believe, Larry Fitzgerald is. Rod Stevens Howling, who really is doing something that he wasn't expected to do, which is carry the load at running back. He's more of a changeup guy, picks up five. Well, there's no doubt. I mean, they come into the season with, with Beanie Wells. He goes down in the third game of the season. And then last year's pickup, running back Ryan Williams, you know, he gets hurt as well. And so now you're asking a, a guy in Rod Stevens Howling to absorb the load, and that's just not what he's equipped to do. I've been impressed, though, Joe, even though the production hasn't been great for a lot of reasons. He gives it everything he's got. Go, go, go. Second down and five. Pass is dropped by Hausler. Third down and five coming up. You know, and what we see then, you know, hey, the Cardinals are tired of hearing about it. Everybody probably at home that's a Cardinals fan is probably tired of hearing about it as far as the offensive line woes and how many times they've given up the hits on the quarterback. But for the Packers, they recognize the Cardinals are going to come into this game. They're going to get the ball out of his hands as quickly as possible. They got the ball out on the one play to Stevens Howling you know, for a nice game. I was a little surprised to see him outflank Green Bay defensively knowing that that's what's coming. Now third down and five, four-man rush. Skelton flushed out to his left and the pass is incomplete. Fitzgerald, they're saying one is saying catch. The other, the side judge is coming up and saying out of bounds. And it certainly looked like he was, and that's the call. Let's see as that ball comes out going to the ground. See if he maintains control. He doesn't. It was almost a good catch on Larry Fitzgerald's part. Good coverage. You know, as I said, when you've got safety help over the top, you're then able to play a little bit tighter underneath. 
and yet they were still almost able to complete that pass. As they try to hide Fitzgerald as best they can, he started that play in the backfield. Came out, almost made that juggling catch, but now a punt from Zastadil. Who puts the nose down and a fair catch just outside the 15 by Cobb. 30 yard punt, nothing on the return. Packers have it second time. Leftover pumpkins. From Halloween. Cordell. From the 16, you car pumpkins this year, Troy, you and the girls? Absolutely. Okay. First down for the Packers. And off to Green. And Alex over the left side gets three. And let's look at this good defense for Arizona, and that's exactly what it is, coordinated by a former teammate of yours, Ray Horton. He's really done a nice job in his second season as defensive coordinator and hey it's on this unit. I mean they have got to play well did a nice job in that first possession not giving up any points at least not giving up a touchdown and then of course the missed field goal by Crosby. No huddle look from Green Bay and a first down completion to James Jones and he's good for eight and a fresh set for Aaron Rodgers and they go to their no huddle and. You know, Mike McCarthy said during the week that maybe he had been a little bit too quick to get out of the no huddle. It's something that they run for the most part very well and something that Aaron Rodgers is very comfortable doing. On first down, Rodgers protected well. Now he's going to run. Aaron Rodgers into Arizona territory. Twenty five yards for number twelve and that's his long of the season. Yeah, you're going to see the outside pressure and so Rogers steps up but because the protection is so good up front man coverage in the secondary everybody running with their backs to Aaron Rodgers he's able to split the seam and get a nice game. Three twenty seven. Three twenty seven. Three nineteen. Three nineteen. Extra men on the rush. That's a completion to Finley. And Jermichael is good for six. Yeah, Jermichael Finley, who last week, when Greg Jennings and Jordy Nelson were out of the lineup, he was expecting to, to have a little bigger day than he did. He just had two receptions. And I think Mike McCarthy's still waiting for it, too. You know, he was such a big part of this offense prior to his knee injury during that Super Bowl year. It just hasn't quite gotten back to that same level of production. On second and four, it's Green. Nice run. Alex Green with a stiff arm and down the sidelines, out of bounds at the 20. 21 yard run by Alex Green. Good blocking up front. Left guard TJ Lang, he's able to seal the inside and just pretty tough running there by Alex Green. You know, watching that game last week and the win over Jacksonville, I, I thought he ran about as well as he could have considering what he had to work with. But Mike McCarthy, he didn't feel that way. He challenged this young man coming into today. Rodgers with time. Now will slide down with a positive play of three yards. This has been a Green Bay team that, as far as their running game is concerned, they come in 26th. Overall they had just three runs of 20 or more yards coming into this game and they have two on this drive one by Aaron Rodgers and that last one by Alex Green now second and eight Rodgers drops it off trying to screen and that that was there if Green could have come down with it. Rodgers got hit at the end of the play. It's third and eight. Yeah, Bonnie Holiday, he's able to come right over the center. He started at one part of the, one part of the offensive line, worked over to the center, and had just a free shot, trying to run a screen. And usually when you get a rusher like that, you're able to get it away in time and get a completion. But that was so fast in his face that they just hadn't even had it set up yet. So now third down and eight. Good pocket for Rodgers. And now he'll try and pick it up, and he does. 
He can do it with his arm. He can do it with his legs. And that one good for 10 and a first down. Well, it's it's great coverage down the field, as you can tell. I mean, he goes from one side of the field all the way to the next and just could not find anybody open. And once again, I mean, the offensive line in the middle is doing such a good job that he then is able to survey the field and still have time to pick up the first down with his legs. First down and goal. Rodgers, pump fake, slides, down he goes. Brought down at the line of scrimmage, and it was Acho who made the play. Now they're just doing a good job in the secondary. I mean, there's just really nowhere to go with the ball. Trying to work Jermichael Finley in the middle. And had they been able to make the stop on third down, that would have been a big win for this Arizona defense because the Packers, for all their inconsistencies this year, they have been outstanding when they've gotten down here in the red zone. So if the Cardinals are able to hold the Packers to a field goal attempt, that's going to be huge. That does not go down statistically as a sack for Acho. Second and goal. Rodgers gets rid of it quickly, and the pass is caught by Nelson. Looked like it might have skipped in there. And now Nelson gets up limping. Let's take a look. That ball bounced in. They called it a catch, but the bigger part of it is Jordy Nelson comes limping off the field. It looked, Joe, like he might have gotten his ankles caught underneath him as he tried to come back and make a play on that ball. Now, as we talked about, he didn't play last week. He's got the hamstring injury. Potentially, he re-aggravated that. But it looked to me, the, by the way he had to come back and try to make a play on this ball, that, that maybe his ankle got underneath him and he may have twisted that a challenge by Arizona on a pass that looked like it bounced in we'll get the call when we come back on top of it it looks like the call will be reversed after reviewing the play the ball hit the ground it's an incomplete pass the third and goal at the eight and a half yard line please reset the clock to 536 Arizona will not be charged a timeout so this is a Green Bay team, Troy, that's going into a bye week. They hope to get healthy. They brought Jordy Nelson back, and now it's an ankle on top of the hamstring. And he looked like he was in quite a bit of pain. I, I, you know, the fact that he's putting a sock back on over his ankle, I, I think, is a, is a good sign for, for Packer fans. He, he, he looks, How about he, that sign? Well, he looks like he'll be done. He looks, you know, he looks like he'll be done for the rest of the day, but that's a real concern. You know, they were getting him back here today, but a huge concern if he's not able to come back and play anytime soon. It's third down and goal. And they're going to get Paris Lennon. Ball start, no, 88 offense. Five yard penalty. And they made, you can see Aaron Rodgers saying it was the guy across. But there's 88 at the bottom, and it wasn't the guy across from where Lennon came over early. Still third down. Didn't catch the end of the announcement, but they're going to mark it five yards against Green Bay. They shut the play down. I thought maybe because Paris Lennon was unabated to the quarterback, but instead they get Jermichael Finley, who was shown tape of that big game that he had in the desert six catches 159 yards in that 9 wild card playoff game that ended in overtime trying to get Finley back as you said he hasn't been the same since he went down in week five 2010. It's third down and goal. Donald Driver in the slot. He comes off the ball immediately, and he's engaged as a blocker there in the middle. It was kind of a design, like wide receiver type screen, even though it was more of a slant route. They even released Jermichael Finley at the tight end position vertical. He wasn't looking to receive the pass either. He was blocking, and just great execution there by the Packers. They ran 
Randall Cobb is developing into a huge weapon for the Green Bay Packers. A penalty flag flies on the extra point. That for Rodgers, his 16th red zone touchdown Outside, pass. Number 21 on the defense. That five-yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. Try is good. They get Patrick Peterson for the offside. 16th red zone touchdown pass by Aaron Rodgers. The top total in the league. Green Bay offense still on fire up seven. MVP now the last three plus games 12 touchdowns no interceptions and this will be a kneel down by William Powell let's go back to the touchdown the block by Donald Driver we'll talk more about that when we come back Adrian Wilson whiffed on the tackle and Cobb's got his fifth touchdown receiving the year moment meanwhile that's career touchdown pass number 154 Second to Brett Favre's 442. The Green Bay franchise leader. Handoff over the right side. And it's Larod Stevens howling. Good for four. Let's go back to the touchdown. Yeah, watch Donald Driver here. He's got up until one yard to make contact and block before the ball is caught. Clearly, he's beyond a yard. He's closer to five yards. Should have been offensive pass interference. Now, the concern that I would have if I'm defensive coordinator Ray Borton is, as you said, Joe, the missed tackle there by Adrian Wilson. He just drops his head. That was a problem last week, and that loss to San Francisco, and the tackling needed to improve, and that should have at least been kept from scoring a touchdown. Should have been offensive pass interference, as I said. Second down and six. It's more from Stevens Howling, and he's about a half yard shy of a first down. Brad Jones was there defending. As we look at the Arizona Cardinals, and they definitely have defensive stars trying to protect their quarterback, whether it's Cobb or Skelton. And because of the injuries up front, they've had no run game. In fact, last week against San Francisco, only seven rushing yards for the game on nine carries. Third and one. Stevens Howling, not a big back. Depends on the spot. The official from the near side has got his right foot right on the 30 and because the drive started right at the 20 that's enough for a Cardinal first down so you're trying to bang it up in there with a 5'7", 185 pound back on third down and half a yard. And he is a little guy going up against big bodies. A little guy. He's their first down, second down back, third down scat nine, back, nine. and then their short yardage goal line guy, too. I mean, he's wearing a lot of hats. Extra man on the blitz. Raji doesn't get there, and Skelton just throws it into the ground. Let's go to Kurt for a game break. Well, we talked on the pregame show about all the defensive touchdowns the Bears have scored. He's on a special team. Block punt, Corey Wooten recovers it. Five yards, touchdown. Seven up in Chicago on top of Tennessee in the first quarter. Joe Troy and Pam. All right, Curtin, we'll look at the NFC North with Chicago, the defense. They get older, but they seem to get better with age, up 7-0. Well, they sure do, and not only are they, they playing good defense in terms yeah. of stopping people, but they're scoring points. <laughs> About scored as many points as some of these offenses around the league. Stevens Howling just gets lost in that pile up of big bodies. He dives forward for three. The first guy there was Pickett. And with about three minutes to go in the opening quarter, it'll be third down for Arizona. Talk about in the land of giants, the Rod Stevens Howling just turns invisible for a moment and goes forward for three. But you, you can see the effort and, that, and that's what you get when you watch this young kid play that I mean he, he I mean he's what five seven and one hundred and eighty five pounds and he gives you every bit of that on every two, run. Two, two, two. Third down in seven. And a timeout is taken by First Arizona team timeout Arizona. So they'll talk about a third and seven. We'll take a break, come back to Lambeau after this.
Michael Skelton in his third year out of Fordham. And that's how his day has started. Again, he's had a lot of pressure in his face. Fitzgerald at the top. And now penalty flags a false start. False start, number 72, offense. Five yard penalty, still third down. They get Rich Ornberger making his second straight start for the injured Adam Snyder. Yeah, it was already tough. I mean, this is an offense that has not been real good on third down throughout this season against a defense that has been. And, you know, it's difficult to convert now when you're looking at third and 12. It gives Dom Capers an opportunity to do a whole lot of things. On third down, Skelton fires and completes to Fitzgerald. They're going to mark him at the 40 with forward progress. And that is right at the marker. Well, pretty good designed route. I really thought that Capers would, would come with defensive pressure. Instead, he played coverage, and Fitzgerald started as though he was going to run the corner. And it was good timing with Skelton putting it on him as soon as he came out of the break. Skelton is a big guy. That was good enough for a first down. Skelton 6'6", 244. The rookie Floyd in motion. Here's Stevens Howling. And he flops forward for two. Let's go to Kurt for a game break. Well, the Houston Texans coming off a bye. Hey, looking like the team that they were before the bye. Beautiful play fake. Matt Schaub find a wide open Owen Daniels. 39 yards for the score. And they take the lead over the Bills. They get ready to start the second quarter up by a touchdown. Joe Troy and Pan. All right, Kurt, the only team to get them this year, the Green Bay Packers. Start the day six and one. And there's the day for Schaub so far. Second and eight. Pass is off the hands of Doucette. And for more on the injury situation, specifically Jordy Nelson of the Packers down to Pam. Well, Joe, many people were surprised Jordy Nelson even played with the Packers' bye week coming up and a chance to heal that hamstring. The Packers tell us pretty much what we already saw, that it's an ankle injury. They didn't tell us the severity of it. Nelson is listed as questionable, Joe. All right, Pam, third down and eight for Arizona. They've converted a third and one and a third and 12 on this drive. Well, on the third and 12, as I said, Capers decided to play coverage. We'll see what he decides to do here. Extra man on the blitz. Cardinals pick it up, and Fitzgerald overthrown. Fourth down. I'm not sure what Skelton saw there. I mean, you want to give a guy like Fitzgerald an opportunity, but he, he was just blanketed. I mean, you've got Tremont Williams, who's playing on the outside, and then the help over the top by M.D. Jennings. There was no chance of fitting that ball in. And, Overall, I, I like this receiver group for the Cardinals. Andre Roberts is a guy who, who I think is uh, up and coming and doing some really nice things. And but but one of those guys, whether it's him or Early Doucette, Michael Floyd, the tight. But you can't always try to fit the ball into double cover. Larry Fitzgerald. Here's one off the side of the foot of Zastadil. Takes a good bounce though, as it stays in bounds, and it will be marked inside the 20 at the 17. In honor of Veterans Day, for every point scored during the NFL's 32 salute to service games, the league will donate $100 to each of its nonprofit partners, the Pat Tillman Foundation, USO, and Wounded Warrior Project. To join the salute, learn more, visit NFL.com slash salute. Members of the 157th Wisconsin National Guard held the flag during the national anthem today here at Lambeau. On first down, pass is not good enough for James Jones. Second and ten, under a minute to go, opening quarter in Green Bay. Well, we'll see what this Arizona defense is is able to do, and you know, as we said, they they really have to kind of carry the torch for for this team, and it's not an offense that can come from behind by very many points, and so 
when you're already down seven points, you can't really afford to give up much more. They fake the handoff. Rodgers keeps it, throws it. Jones, first down. And making moves on the rookie Jamel Fleming. Good for 17. James Jones has had himself a, an awfully nice year. They go off of the play action. You're seeing more and more teams do this. Of course, you see it in Washington when RG3 actually runs with the ball, but more and more teams are going with that play action out of the gun, hold linebackers. But James Jones has had himself a nice first half of the season. Now they do hand it off. And a nice run by Alex Green out to the 40. Picked up six. Darrell Washington, who has been quiet so far, there to make the stop, and that should do it for the first quarter here in Green Bay. A little shoving after the play, and with the lead and the football, the Packers will start the second quarter with the ball at their own 40. Take a break, come back. Quarter number two. The four and four Cardinals, the five and three Packers getting together in Wisconsin. Look at the rush yardage for Green Bay against a good Arizona defense. Averaged 90 yards rushing per game. They're up to 71. And this is like a different team offensively if they can run the ball. Second down and four. Rodgers out to his right. Just flicks it. And the pass is in the air and picked off. It went off the body of Randall Cobb and then intercepted by William Gay. And that's his first interception as a Cardinal. That ball was in the air and Gay was there to pick it off for Rodgers' first interception over the last four games. You see as Cobb's going to the ground, it, it hits him in the chest and then it's taken away from wow. him. And I didn't see anything there to think that it the, the ball had gone to the ground I don't I don't believe that it did it was just a heads up play there by Gay and whether or not Cobb had possession of it I think is the real key as he's going to the ground maybe worth a challenge it's a turnover so it's reviewed anyway and Mike McCarthy can just look up at the video screen so it is a booth review and I think you bring up a good point possession with the ball tap down I'm going to check in with Mike Pereira as we're under a booth review because of the turnover Mike what did you see I think what you have here is a receiver Cobb going to the ground he has to maintain possession after he hits the ground for it to be a catch he doesn't ball doesn't hit the ground defender then gets the ball heads up field it's an interception the only thing you could look After at is the, the maybe the intercepting the player the down stands. by contact. And they're going to stay with the ruling on the field, so Mike got it right. William Gay gets the interception. I thought maybe that ball popped up in the air. Tough to see along the sideline, but just kind of a crazy play, and Gay is there to just rip it out of the arms, in essence, of Randall Cobb. Yeah, I mean, a really nice play there by William Gay. It's hard to tell exactly what happened to the ball after it came into Cobb's chest. But regardless, for Gay to be able to locate it, get it, and maintain control of it himself, I mean, Mike McCarthy doesn't like the rule. And he, you know, he had a pretty good look at it from where he was. And maybe he feels that Cobb had possession of the ball, but it was very, very difficult to tell. In fact, we couldn't tell from the shots that we showed. And like Mike Pereira said, every week we talk about maintaining control going to the ground. Cobb didn't. Here's one downfield. And caught by Andre Roberts that's going to take it down to the three yard line and in a blink the Arizona Cardinals are in great position to tie this game well a really good job an excellent route by Andre Roberts there on the outside and he's able to make the move and go to the post and inside you've got King at tight end who helps tie up the safety Morgan Burnett and that's why Andre Roberts is one on one on the rookie Casey Hayward. Remember they don't have a big back to bang it into the end zone. But they do hand it to Larod Stevens Howling and he's down close to the one. A 40 yard completion Troy to Andre Roberts. 
right after the interception and just to go back as Mike said you have to maintain control of the catch going to the ground Cobb didn't that's when Gay ripped it out of his arms and because the ball didn't touch the ground it's an interception of that was the right ball. And the receiver. Cardinals then they get a, a big play in the passing game something they don't get a lot of but someone other than Fitzgerald steps up and makes it happen in Andre Roberts. Extra offensive lineman Nate Potter in the game. Steven Howler to the edge for the touchdown. Able to stay on his feet and then turned it on. Got to the corner of the end zone. And we're an extra point away from a tie game. Now Jared Bush had him off the edge and he was unable to make the tackle. There's pressure that forces Howling to the outside. Bush unable to make the play. Brad Jones trying to get there and great effort for him to get to the outside and be able to punch that one in. So they've gone through Beanie Wells, they've gone through Ryan Williams, and now LaRod Stevens Howling has his third rushing touchdown that good from a yard away. Feeling ties it. It's points off the turnover. William Gay, the former Pittsburgh Steeler, with the takeaway. Steven Towling with a touchdown. Tied at seven. His interception as an Arizona Cardinal, and three plays later, Larod Stevens Howling. After a 40-yard Roberts catch, which was Arizona's second longest play from scrimmage this year, set it up. We're tied at seven. Cobb will take an eight. Fox Sports is your home for the UFC beginning on Friday with a new episode of The Ultimate Fighter on FX. Saturday, it's UFC on Fuel TV 6, live from Macau, China. Then on Saturday, December 8th, it's UFC on Fox 5, where Benson Henderson will put his lightweight championship on the line against Nate Diaz. And during that entire break, Mike McCarthy was getting the explanation from Walt Coleman. We heard it from Mike Pereira that it was the right call because Randall Cobb didn't maintain control of the catch going to the ground. I think the right call was made, but uh, you know, I also think that Mike McCarthy had the best view of, of what happened. You know, here's a toss to Cobb running over the right side, and he can get you from a lot of different angles. Good for 11. Campbell on the stop. Here's Kurt Menefee with a game break. Hey, stop me if you've seen this before. The Bears defense with a touchdown. Matthew Hasselbeck picked off by Brian Erlacher. He's not the speedy Erlacher he used to be, but nonetheless, 46 yards later, it's good enough for a touchdown. The defense then forced a fumble, which turned into an offensive touchdown on the very next play from scrimmage. They're up 28-2 at Tennessee. Joe? All right. College safety Brian Erlacher has had that unbelievable career, and he's still going. It's crazy how many points that defense has scored. Here's Starks back in after only being in Troy in that initial possession. He gets four. Yeah, I'm wondering if if you know he wasn't quite right because you know after that first carry that he had for the four yards, he was not back in the game until just now. And as Mike McCarthy said to us on Friday. Hey, James Starks is going to be in the lineup and on first and second downs and then bring in Alex Green on third downs and some of the one back stuff. But that was not the case until that last carry. Every second, every second. Now it's Cobb in the backfield. And Cobb gets it right up the gut. And he takes it across the 45 to the 46. Good for 12. An impressive guy in his second year out of Kentucky. You can see Reggie Cobb, and you know this is impressive for anybody. But the one cut right there in the zone blocking scheme—I mean, this guy is obviously a, an unbelievable, an unbelievably versatile player. And you now Brian Balaga, the right tackle, he comes off the field. You said Reggie Cobb. That's Randall Cobb. <laughs> He's impressive. No matter what his first yes, uh, might be during the course of the ball game. Over the right side, it's Starks. Nice move. And they would love Troy to get him going as James Starks was such a big part 
of their Super Bowl run in 2010. He hasn't been heard from much since. No, and and he's such a powerful guy. I mean, he's a strong back. I think where some of the concern then comes is is maybe in pass protection, but he is able to do some things within the running game if they can get him going, as you said, like he's capable of going, and he's just been kind of a mixed bag. Bennett. Missed the first five games with turf toe. Black 98, Black 98. Packers are over 100 yards rushing on the day, and now Starks has got a first down. And now with Balaga out, we'll take a look up front and see how they're lining up. Balaga, Corey, you asked Mike McCarthy, he said, yeah, he had one bad half at Seattle. They've got Lang now kicked out to tackle. He's out at right tackle, then sitting, then Saturday. They bring in Evan Dietrich Smith with Newhouse at left tackle. And off to Starks. James Starks over the right side gets five. Well, I think you look at their offensive line, and yeah, they have to bring in Dietrich Smith, but he's a backup center, and then he swings as a backup guy to both guard positions. So. You know, with Balaga going down, it essentially affects two players because of the fact that Lang then has to move to right tackle. Now, this is an offensive line, unlike a lot of offensive lines around the league, certainly the one across the field from them, they've been pretty healthy. I mean, all five of these guys have started every game this year. Second down and five. The seventh play of the drive and to the sideline too high for Randall Cobb. William Gay was out there defending William Gay, a guy that Ray Horton was familiar with from his days with the Steelers. Ray Horton, the defensive coordinator, was defensive backs coach under Dick LeBeau in Cincinnati, then with LeBeau in Pittsburgh. And there's a heavy connection to Dom Capers, who was the coordinator in the early 90s for Bill Cowher and the Steelers. So there's a lot of similarities between these two defenses and their schemes. It's third down and five. There are flags down. Free play over the middle. Passes off the left hand of Cobb. Arizona came across offside at the beginning of the play. It's a good job by Aaron Rodgers. You saw some of the influence of Dick LeBeau on Ray Horton on that last defensive snap. You see all of these guys here, they're all standing Offside. up, some of those of which are defensive Defense. linemen. Five-yard penalty, still third down. Bonnie Holiday, Darnell Dockett, defensive linemen, they're standing up, and then they bring the edge pressure, but Aaron Rodgers able to use snap count and draw them off sides, and then knowing that he had a free play, tried to fit one in down the middle. It's going to be third down and less than a full yard. After the five-yard penalties, they get Sam Acho. We're coming across too soon. And they start the play with Alex Green in the backfield with Rodgers. And a timeout taken by the Packers. That was called by Mike McCarthy on the sideline. Green Bay. That's their first. Third down and less than a yard for the Packers when we come back. Cosby and some of the problems that he ha has had is inconsistency third and one take a shot I, my guess is if they don't hit it or they don't get it here McCarthy goes for it on fourth down instead they hand to green and he ran into a wall he got a first down it was Kerry Rhodes Paris Lennon there as well but a first down it was loud well Kerry Rhodes he was the unblocked guy right in the hole He celebrated, but a first yeah. down nonetheless. Well, they got the first down, but that, that still felt pretty good for Kerry Rhodes. He was traded from the Jets in 2010. And his eighth year out of Louisville. Look at the run to pass ratio in this drive. Seven to one. Ninth play. And trying to jam it right into the gut of Tom Crabtree. 
incomplete. Let's go down to Pam Oliver. Well, Joe, as you know, Jordy Nelson had that ankle injury, and he is sitting on the bench at this moment. Now, right tackle Brian Balaga, he twisted his hip. They want to get a better look, so they've taken him into the locker room for further evaluation. Balaga is listed as questionable as well. That looks serious, Joe. It looked like a hyperextended knee. Pam's reporting as a hip. It looked very similar to the way that Bo Jackson went down years ago. Blaga certainly doesn't have the speed of Bo Jackson, but the same impact. Rodgers dropped. Another drop by the Packers. That's been a problem all year. This time it's driver. And this is a Green Bay receiving core, whether it's at the tight end position with Crabtree in the previous play, or this one by Driver. That's been a problem all season. Yeah, that went on Crabtree. He was a little late getting his head around. The ball was on him before he was ready for it, and that's kind of understandable. But the one with Donald Driver, very frustrating, especially when an offense is, is kind of struggling a little bit. And you, that really then gets you behind, certainly within the chains now facing the third long. Only four completions for Rodgers, who has seen four drops in this first half. And so Rodgers has to call a timeout. Go talk about it. We welcome you inside our broadcast booth here at Lambeau and uh, while we watch these two teams play here this afternoon we'll take a, a bigger picture look and look at the NFC and they were talking about it on the pregame show Atlanta's undefeated but yet they still don't get talked about as the best team in the conference where do they stand on your list I, well, I think they're really good I mean I, they've got a quarterback that can certainly lead that team I, I do think that this game tonight against the Cowboys is going to be a real challenge for them I think one of the reasons why Maybe they haven't gotten a lot of the attention that they probably deserve is because of some of the teams that they have beaten, although some of those wins have, have been some really nice wins for them. I think everybody's kind of waiting for this team right here, the Packers, you know, with the injuries that they have had, yet they've been able to win three in a row. But as we're seeing here again today, just some real up and down play. It's third down and ten blitz. Packers pick it up, passes. Almost dropped. Driver hung on. It depends on the spot. And the official saying first down. His feet might be a little short of our unofficial line. You talk about a favorable spot. And this one again nearly hit the ground. But, well, you saw it. He didn't use his hands. Donald Driver has excellent hands, but the ball got in on his shoulder pads, and that's why it bounced up the way that it did. And well, I, I didn't see, I don't know about the spot on that one. Yeah, I, I thought it was short. Had he have caught it clean, he picks up the first down easily, but that, that looked short to me. It's only the fifth completion for Aaron Rodgers in the half. Here's one for Cobb. What a throw! Touchdown! His second of the day. William Gay on the outside and Cobb who's outstanding as a slot receiver he's able to from the inside run the go route and because of where he started his lineup it gives him a lot of room gives Aaron Rodgers a lot of field to lay that ball over the outside shoulder and I know Aaron Rodgers he likes Randall Cobb a lot you know I mean they can use him in so many different ways than they have he's a real weapon. Cobb told us on Friday over the offseason he studied Victor Cruz, Wes Welker, Steve Smith. They may be studying him. Games, 18 touchdowns, the most ever touchdown passes over a five game span in Packer history. We talk about quarterbacks like Bart Starr, Brett Favre, and now Aaron Rodgers. That's saying something as Powell returns it. Spins his way across the 20 out to the 22. And we go back to that catch on third down and 10 to Donald Driver. Now you see the first down line, and once he gets possession of the ball, his right foot is on the line, but watch where the ball is. I mean, the ball is short of the first down line. I, I think it's looking at fourth and one, and then the very next play, they come back and throw a beautiful pass then to Randall Cobb for the touchdown. And 
know, we showed the amount of yardage that Randall Cobb was responsible for on that last touchdown drive, and where would they be without him? Mm. You know, considering Greg Jennings' absence for pretty much the entire season, and then of course Jordy Nelson going down early in this one again. There's Powell. His first carry of the day, he's out just shy of the 25. A gain of three. Pickett was there for the stop. In the aftermath of natural disasters like Superstorm Sandy, the American Red Cross provides life saving services such as meals, shelter, and mobilizing resources and workers nationwide. Visit redcross.org or text. Red Cross to 90999 to give a $10 donation. Second down and seven. Skelton hangs in and fires incomplete for Andre Roberts, who has a 40 yarder today. It's now third down and seven. Well, there's definitely contact to take a look at it. You know Devon House he's in position and Roberts was expecting to see a flag but you know, he's entitled to a position on the field as well if the receivers running through him then that would not be pass interference. Roberts checks out on third and seven. Got it away, and now it's dropped. Pass is incomplete early Doucette. He had it. Looked like he was about to turn up field and put it right on the ground. It's fourth down. Just a great job, too, by John Skelton of hanging in the pocket. Clay Matthews coming off the edge. He gets a free hit on him, and he puts it perfectly out in front of early Doucette and a play he just has to make. I mean, an offense, as we pointed out, that has that has had their share of problems and inconsistency. It's been hard for them to pick up yardage. Six times this year, they have failed to even have 300 yards of offense. And you know, when you've got a quarterback under duress and he puts the ball where it has to be, he's got to have some help. Now they get a delay of game on top of it. That delay was of the game, offense, five-yard penalty, still fourth down. Troy, that was really close to a catch and fumble by Doucette. He had it. They talk about an element of time and being able to make another football move really close. It was called incomplete as you watch it again. Yeah, I, I think it was the right call on incomplete. I mean, you're right. A, you know, football move. Does he have it? Does he turn it up the field? And it just looked to me like before he really made a football move that the ball was loose and coming out. But, and I think that's why they had to delay a penalty, delay a game, because Wisenhunt was trying to decide whether or not to challenge it. A couple of moves by Randall Cobb, and then he gets popped at the 25. And we'll look back at a season review after Bethel made that last play for Arizona, and the two teams start to shove, but no flags. Cardinals started this season 4-0 after finishing last season. Winning seven of their final nine games. And you see the points per game average over the first four. Since then, they've lost their last four, October not kind, and they have averaged nine points per game. They've gone through Kevin Cobb, who's out with a rib injury. They've lost two running backs. They've lost two tackles during the preseason. There's Kevin Cobb. And he was settling in pretty well for Arizona after that deal the organization made to get him in a trade from Philadelphia prior to last season. And now he's out. Over, 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 over. Sounded like Rodgers changed it up. Here's Starks. And James Starks lost it. Ball on the ground. That's loose. And Rodgers is there to get back on top of it. Rodgers trailing the play recovers the fumble after it was knocked out by Paris Lennon and then a little wry smile by Aaron Rodgers as he's there to get on top. Uh, it's just a great heads up play by Aaron Rodgers keeping his head on the play seeing what's happening saw the ball come loose and is then able to make a play. There was a Cardinal who was in a position who was watching Starks trying to come off the block. 
and he had an opportunity to make a play on the ball just was unable to but but a really great job by Aaron Rodgers keeping that play alive. Now second down and three setting up the screen for Green. He's got some speed and he's out across the 35 a first down of the game of six. Alex Green you know. He came into this game averaging under three yards per carry. Mike McCarthy told us he'd be shocked if Alex Green doesn't develop into a good back in this league. He's just been going too fast. They want him to slow down and let things develop in front of him. That happens a lot with young backs. And remember, I mean, he's coming off a pretty significant knee injury last year and, you know, still kind of finding his way. And yeah, that'll all come as he gets more and more reps. Here he is, right side. Little hesitation, and he gets to the 40, a gain of two. And now a late slug, but still no flag. O'Brien Schofield threw a shot, but no penalty flag. It's second and eight. Official was right there, too. Normally, you don't get away with something like that. Was he and Crabtree getting into it, and then that little extra at the end, but no flag. So second and eight. I don't know if the official saw it. He was squatted down. He may not have even seen the blow. Here's Green, delayed handoff, and Green is out inches shy. The 45, third down coming up. Meanwhile, on that punt return, Randall Cobb, who's such obviously a big weapon, got kind of sat up. And then got hit by Bethel. And they're taking a look at him, checking his strength after he got hit in the back. The left arm went down pretty easy. Third down and three. Packers four for five on third down. And now five for six. James Jones with a first down catch inside Arizona territory. Three and a half to go. The Packers have only one timeout left. Jamel Fleming, the rookie, giving them a little bit of space, and then Aaron Rodgers recognizing that they're bringing pressure, gets the ball out quickly, and, and they're able to then convert that third down. I bet the Packers have already rushed the ball for 127 yards against a very good Arizona defense. That is... Uh, Big silver lining for Mike McCarthy. A couple big runs, and then of course the yardage that Aaron Rodgers has been able to get scrambled. Setting it up for Green. That blocking in front. Alex Green is down inside the 30 to the 29. Good block by Saturday out in front of him, a 19-yard catch and run. Yeah, it was effective enough. I've always liked this screen play when you get the quarterback rolling out to his right. And you get the defense then flowing that way because the Cardinals are so fast to pursue and then come back and get the ball to Alex Green. Almost a nice play there by Darrell Washington. Had blockers. He's almost able to split that and make a play, but Alex Green's able to get a good gain on the play. 319! Quick throw, Boykin. And the rookie trying to make a move. Couldn't get around Patrick Peterson. And for Peterson, Got to feel good to bring down Boykin on that initial move, a good strong tackle after a rough game against the 49ers. Yeah, you know, he was really looking forward to getting back out onto the field and playing, you know, one of his worst games. He's he's someone they think a lot of there in Arizona, an excellent young player. Two minute warning in Lambeau Field. Packers on the march, leading by seven. Stop. Packers lead by seven. They have a second down inside the 30. Packers get the second half kickoff as well. Second. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He has made some acrobatic catches this year. How about that effort to go up and get it for his eighth touchdown of the season? They bring Kerry Rhodes on the safety blitz and one that. He's kind of made routine throughout this season. He came in tied for the most touchdown catches in the NFL with seven. That's number eight. And it's a 14 point lead for Green Bay. 
Yeah, you show the blitz, and that then creates one on one, and, and it's good coverage. You know, I mean, Fleming's in a pretty good position. He's trying to locate the ball. He's not quite able to. He's got his arm there, but just excellent concentration by James Jones and and making a tough catch. So they're trying to replace Greg Jennings, who is their top threat on the outside. He had that surgery for the lower abdominal muscle, that groin injury. It's affected him all year. According to Mike McCarthy, the doctor in Philadelphia said he could be back in three weeks. They hope to get Jordy Nelson back. What caught my attention, I don't know if it caught yours, when we talked to Aaron Rodgers, he said things are getting back to normal. And when they're normal in Green Bay, they're anything but normal because they are a dynamic offense. And Aaron Rodgers with a three touchdown pass afternoon already leading by 14. Well he likes this team he compared it to the 2010 team and we all know what that team went on to do. That streak at the end. They won it all over the Steelers in Super Bowl 45. Here's Kurt to tell us what's coming up at halftime. All right, coming up on the Visa Halftime, we'll put the band back together and get you all caught up on a busy NFL Sunday, including a matchup of a couple of surprise teams as Miami takes on Indianapolis and Peyton Manning and the Broncos try to continue their hot streak. It's all on the Visa Halftime. Thanks, Kurt. Good to see we got David Hill off the polo field for a little sit-in. First down at the 20. Pass is caught. Fitzgerald. And the Cardinals need something to happen here as Fitzgerald is good for nine and a half. Second and a short one. They have two timeouts left. Down by 14. There's Fitzgerald, and that was almost picked. Fitzgerald so good at getting the contested throw and that's a first down good for six. Well they've got plenty of time they've got two timeouts and Skelton just has to be careful here and recognize that and be smart with the throws. It's a defense that's very opportunistic and as we know capable of a lot of takeaways. Handoff to LaRod Stevens Howling and he is going to wisely get out of bounds. And a decent pickup on first down of six yards. Well, this would be a nice way to end the half for Arizona, considering the fact that they're now down 14 points. And you know, we've talked about it. They're not really built to come from behind. Last week in that loss on Monday night to San Francisco, they basically abandoned the run altogether with only nine rushing attempts. They can't afford to have that happen here this week. Second down and four. Skelton completes. That's the rookie. Floyd is out near midfield again of nine. Yeah, you do not want to become one dimensional against the Dom Capers defense. With as much trouble as they've had protecting the quarterback this year. So trying to close it to a seven point game before half. Or just get something. There he goes down Skelton and right in his face is Mike Daniels. And for Daniels, his second sack of the year, and that is a big loss. You can see the move. They go Clay Matthews inside. Daniels comes around the edge, and that's the twist in the game up front that frees him up. A loss of 10 on the play, and Arizona has to use their second timeout. So Daniels. With Jarrell Worthy out with a concussion, Mike Neal, who has a sack in this game. Good news for him coming off a sprained ankle. The sack by Daniels makes it second and 20. On second down, Skelton has it batted away by M.D. Jennings trying to get it to early to set. 33 seconds left and this Green Bay defense now Troy has 28 sacks on the year. They had 29 all last season. So Don Capers has that defense cranking again. It's third and 20. Number 52 has nine of those sacks. None today.
Quick throw. Pass is dropped. That's Doucette again. He's dropped a couple. And it's fourth down. The Cardinals were able to get some good completions and start moving the ball and get a little rhythm going. And then the sack essentially just took him out of this. Even if Doucette's able to make a catch here, which he should have made, they're, they're not going to pick up the first down. But we showed the amount of pressure that's been put on John Skelton, and it's that's hard. Arizona with four drops in this half, three of them by Doucette. And good news for Green Bay that Cobb is back there to return the punt, the fair catch. After a 45-yard punt, Green Bay will start the 15. Fox tonight, the most animated night on TV returns. Don't miss animation domination with the all-new episodes of your favorite comedies, The Cleveland Show, The Simpsons, Bob's Burgers, Family Guy, and American Dad. All new episodes of Animation Domination are back starting tonight, 7.30 Eastern, 6.30 Central on Fox. And Green Bay is going to leave well enough alone, take a knee, and that'll do it for the first half here at Lambeau. And the Packers, who have won three straight, and the Cardinals, who have lost four straight, Head off the field in a 21-7 game, Green Bay on top. Cobb has two touchdown receptions. James Jones the other. That's the score halfway through it here on November 4th. Maybe the most impressive for Green Bay. You know they're going to get yards through the air, but on the ground, this has been a big day for their running game. We've seen good work from Starks and Alex Green, and when they can't do it, Aaron Rodgers has come up with a couple of big runs. So Feely will kick it away. And Cobb will wait for it on the other end. Aaron Rodgers, 24 touchdown passes to lead the NFL. And in charge of an offense that came in at the start of the day ranked 21st in the league in total offense after being number three last year and setting a franchise record with over 405 yards per game. Last year they averaged 35 points per game and that per game average is creeping north after a slow start on one hop it's Cobb over the left side he is dangerous. What a game he's had out of bounds across the 45. And a 43 yard return for Randall Cobb. As I said, I mean, this guy, this guy is just such a great weapon. You kind of wonder, you know, with the injuries that they've had at the wide receiver position, if they really want to see him returning kicks. Of course, if he's returning them like this, they want to. Continue to have him doing that, but just the exposure to injury. I mean, as I said a little bit earlier, he's just a guy that they can, you know, not afford to have go down himself. We saw him get banged up earlier there in the first half, but he's had himself a, a nice afternoon here in this game, doing a lot of different things from a lot of different positions. And off is to Green. Wrestled down at the 48 of Arizona. Let's go down to Pam Oliver. Well, Joe, talking to both coaches at halftime, first for the cards, Ken Wisenhunt. He said offensively, we've got to catch the ball. Defensively, that we need to play better. As for, I asked him a couple of questions about John Skelton. Is he taking some chances? He said, what are you talking about? That's not accurate. As for the Packers, Mike McCarthy says he's keeping out Balaga and Joey, I'm sorry, Jordy Nelson. Yeah, Balaga still not out there. Thanks, Pam as Rodgers escapes trouble and then throws too short for Jermichael Finley. That was almost Farvesque rolling out to the right, throwing back across the field. And now down is O'Brien Schofield. Take a look at the injury as Schofield, number 50, oh, got rolled up. I think there was Dockett. It was Darnell Dockett who went up the back of the left leg of O'Brien Schofield. Take it from Barty, just inspire action. Outside Lambeau Field. As they continue to improve, it seems, year after year. Come 
run across was Quentin Groves. Was he drawn off? Nope. Neutral zone infraction, number 54. Defense unabated to the quarterback. Five yard penalty, still third down. Well, this made this third down a heck of a lot easier now for the Green Bay Packers, and that's uh, that's a down that the Cardinals have, have really struggled here in this game to win. But coming into the game defensively, they had been very, very good getting off the field in third on third downs, but not today. The Packers have been very efficient. Makes it third down and one. Cardinals came in fifth best in the league defensively on third down. Packers five of six. This one is incomplete and good coverage by Peterson. Uh, James Jones, he was right there. Talked about Patrick Peterson a little bit earlier. I mean, really good coverage. He's on the inside anticipating the inside breaking route and makes a play on it. And as good as he is as a corner, he's been every bit as good as a return guy. Last year, what, four punt returns for touchdowns. Yeah. Very dangerous. First time we'll see him returning a punt. This is the first of the day for Mastin. And it ends up in the end zone. Took a funny bounce. And a good bounce for the Cardinals, who need to get something, Troy Aikman, something going offensively here against the Green Bay defense. Well, uh, it was a good start defensively for the Cardinals to at least not give up any points there coming out to start this second half. And yeah, I mean, they, they've got to, John Skelton's got to get some help. You know, they do have to catch the ball, and they need to run the ball, you know, certainly better than they have. But they just, it's hard to go the distance the way that they do it. We saw the big play they had to Andre Roberts that, that set up the touchdown that they got, and, and those are the big chunks that, that they really need to have because it's hard for them to put nine, ten plays together. Here's one in the air, up for grabs, picked off by Walden. Hayward is the one that forced it up into the air, and Eric Walden comes down with a ball. Hausler was the intended receiver. Walden gets his first pick, but it was up there for anybody to take. Hayward right here, he's the guy who drives on it. When he sees Hausler on the outbreaking route, he just jumps on it immediately, and Skelton does, either doesn't see him or he thinks he can just squeeze it in there. Ball deflected, Eric Walden's able to locate it. And a big turnover, and as we talked about, I mean, already down 14 points, giving the ball back to the Packers with this kind of field position. It's going to make it awfully tough now in this defense. First turnover forced by the Packer defense. That's their 10th interception. Hand off to Green. Campbell was in there first to hit him. This was a defense that last year had 31 interceptions. It's only number 10 as they play in their ninth game, but this is a Green Bay team overall that didn't want to have their head coach hear them talking about a bye week coming up, but it'll be a big one if they can get a win here today and then take a week to get healed. They are banged up. Rodgers, look left, throws right, and the reach of Green. There was nothing out there. Groves was there staring into the eyes of Alex Green. Meanwhile, the Arizona Cardinals started this season 4-0 on top in the AFC in the NFC West. Now it's the 49ers again and everybody else. Arizona's sliding. Seattle's had a good season, and that defense just seems to get better. And the young quarterback, Russell Wilson, the Rams have been better, but have dropped their last few. Here's one to Jones out of his reach. And on third down, the incomplete pass will bring Crosby onto the field. William Gay was out there defending. Yeah, it's very frustrating for Aaron Rodgers, I know, because of the fact that they did get the ball where they did and could not be able to do anything with it and now have to settle for a field goal. But give the Arizona Cardinals defense some credit. Mason Crosby started this season five for five. Four of nine since. He missed from 44 today. And the 33 yarder is drilled. Makes it 24 7. Green Bay on top. Opening minutes. 
17 point game now with the Packers on top. They turned the interception by Walden into three points. 24 7 as Crosby kicks it away. William Powell waiting for it and he will bring it out. Out across the 25, knocked down near the 28. And we look at the guy that every defense looks at, Larry Fitzgerald, in his day so far. Well, as you're going to see, I mean, he gets a lot of different looks, and he's going to have people in his face. He's going to have safeties over the top. That time he came out of the backfield, he draws a linebacker. Pretty good coverage with, again, help over the top. But Larry Fitzgerald has you know, really been a pro through it all. I mean, he was part of a very prolific offense with Kurt Warner. They made it to the Super Bowl. He was regarded as the best receiver in football. And you don't get quite that same attention nationally when you're not winning games. Rod Stevens Howling gets three over the right side. Walden on the stop. Larry Fitzgerald is still on that short list of guys with, let's say, an A.J. Green, a Calvin Johnson, Andre Johnson, the defensive coordinators game plan for on the plane home from the week before and he has not let that frustration creep in but a guy who's in his ninth year he's missed only four games he's extremely tough and so gifted going up and fighting for the football Skelton's looking for him he's got him but Fitzgerald slid down lost his footing incomplete and that was a play too where again they they've got a safety helping him MD Jennings is helping Tremont Williams and that's the hole then within the, the zone and Skelton recognizes it he's trying to fit it in there. Well Fitzgerald just loses his footing when he tries to come back and make a play on that ball you know considering all of the problems the Cardinals have had offensively not just this year but for the last few years he's a guy who's going to catch 90 balls he's going to have 1200 to 1400 yards receiving I mean still very very productive by any measurement third down and seven four men on the rush the pass is dropped again this time it's Hausler another good throw from Skelton and he's got to be frustrated with what he is getting on the other end. Well, and he finally has protection in the pocket. I mean, he's got a clean pocket. Nobody's in his face. That just doesn't happen very often. And when he has had that, he's delivered good throws. You Catch the, the ball, he said. Yeah, well, you can see the frustration starting to set in. And I'm surprised it took this long. Here's another shank off the foot of Zastadil. Five Arizona drops. And this punt, 20 yards by Zastadil. It shakes his head. Green Bay up 17. They have it at the 50. The Green Bay Packers have 259 total yards to Arizona's 109. This drive starts at midfield. Up by 17. To the ground, it's Green. And Alex. Straight ahead for two. Darrell Washington on the stop. And again, the Packers are without Balaga. They have Derek Sherrod, who's on the physically unable to perform list. And they've got decisions to make. They made one, Green Bay did, with linebacker Frank Zombo. They activated him off that list this week. Got Andrew Corliss on that list. Sherrod as well. Sherrod may be headed to Iowa. Here is Rodgers just flinging it out of bounds in the direction of Randall Cobb, and we go down to Pam Oliver. Well, Joe, uh, as we speak, Cardinals linebacker O'Brien Schofield, he is not out there on the field. We are told he has a sprained left ankle. The cards aren't sure if he will, aren't sure if he will return. All right, thanks, Pam. So number 50 not out there. As Rodgers steps up, and that one comes out. They're not saying incomplete pass. It looked like his arm was going forward. And this one, now eventually, Walt Coleman just said incomplete pass. Quentin Groves was there. He got into the chest of Aaron Rodgers, and this one was clearly arm going forward incomplete, even with a late call by Walt Coleman. That was Quentin Groves who came around the edge. T.J. Lang, as you said, Joe, going from the guard position out to right tackle with Balaga going down. 
Aaron Rodgers didn't sense him coming. I know last week Rodgers was wanting the tuck rule call to avoid a fumble. That time, you know, clearly empty hand hand coming forward. The correct call was made. So now fourth down and eight. Second punt by Maste. And he hits it end over end with Peterson looking at it and muffing it. Able to get back on top of it. It will stay with Arizona. Well, this was a big week for my partner Troy Aikman. Henrietta, Oklahoma held an event at Henrietta High School for their NFL hometown Hall of Famer Troy Aikman on Tuesday. School received a Troy Aikman plaque from the NFL Hall of Fame. Troy's plaque was the 44th distributed by the Hall of Fame. And it's going to spark an idea. As we welcome you inside our broadcast booth, we're over there from the uh, cart. That was a nice. Nice night, I know, for you. Well, it, it, it was, yeah. And, uh, I think my friends and family are saying, are you kidding? We've got to come honor you again <laughs> for what? Baz <laughs> is caught. This is Floyd and to me to get back to this game. That's the guy that has to develop as the threat opposite Larry Fitzgerald, Michael Floyd, who made that catch good for 17 yards. Yeah, you know, he's the first round pick out of Notre Dame, the second receiver taken in the draft, just 13 receptions coming in. But I will tell you, outside of quarterback, playing wide receiver in this league as a rookie is a tall order. You know, I've seen a lot of young guys, talented guys, really struggle that first season. Now, I don't know how many opportunities he's really been given, but they certainly like him. And Green Bay likes Clay Matthews, who can't bring down Skelton. What a good job by John Skelton to avoid a sack. And he used all 6'6", 244 pounds, and all of his strength to get away from Matthews, who limps away. Yeah, I think Matthews is wondering how he got away from that one, you know, because he gets a great rush, got some, he has a beat on Skelton, and, you know, you, because of his size, as you said, he's just a difficult guy to bring down. And, you know, Ske Skelton's just getting tired of this, I'll promise you. You know, and the frustration that he has experienced, we saw that on the last possession with the drop hey, by Hausler. But man, he's handled it a lot better, I think, than I would have. On second down and 10, pass is broken up. And a good play is made over the middle by McMillan. The rookie safety on Hausler. Let's go to Patrick O'Neill for a game break. All right, Joe, thanks very much. Bills at the Texans. Houston quietly, the class of the AFC, Arian Foster quietly leads the NFL with rushing touchdown. That's his 10th. Still a ball game, though. Houston up on Buffalo, 14 to 9. Joe Troy and Pan. All right, Patrick, thanks. Back here, it's third down and 10. Still 10 and a half to go, third quarter. Skelton fires, pass caught, and Hausler fights for a first down. After a drop on the last possession, this one a good catch and lunge for 11 yards. They bring a four man rush. And so they decide to play coverage and you see it looked initially like it was going to be a clean pocket Walden comes off the block as Skelton steps up and, and he takes another blow and initially when this ball was completed it didn't look like the necessary depth had been maintained to pick up the first down but because of the missed tackle he's able to get it across for the first down. They fake the handoff Skelton over the middle has a man and that is Andre Roberts. He gets hit hard going to the ground and after a 40 yarder in the first half this one good for 23 and Roberts has to go to the sideline and even overall the Cardinals have not run the ball all that well the play action still does its job in getting the linebackers up and getting the ball into Andre Roberts I said a little bit earlier in this game I, I like him I mean he's got really good quickness I like the way he gets in and out of his breaks he's going to be a really good player. Got hit by Morgan Burnett. Pressure off the edge, and I believe Desmond Moses may have gotten a hand on that throw by Skelton. Second down and 10. Yeah, he definitely got his hand on the ball as he brings it back to cut it loose.
Second down and ten. Fighting for extra yardage is Larod Stevens howling. And after getting hit at the line of scrimmage, good for five yards. First guy there was Desmond Moses, third down and five coming up. Nate Potter has taken over at left tackle. As we tell you, you can call Star Star NFL to download NFL Mobile now and get coverage of every NFL game. Potter is another rookie up front. It's taken over for DeAnthony Batiste. Seventh round pick out of Boise State. And we're going to have a challenge here by Green Bay saying that LaRod Stevens Howling on that run Green Bay was challenging down. Grueling on the field that the runner was not down by contact. Let's take another look. There's Moses. And was his left knee down? Was the forearm down? Tough to see. A challenge from Green Bay. We'll get the call when we come back. See on that run by Stevens Howling. What I see is he's not down because remember the hand does not make you down the front or the back of the hand or the wrist. You got to be all the way to the forearm. This call should stay. After reviewing the play, the really on fields confirm only the runner's wrist was on the ground. Green Bay will be charged with their first team timeout. So there's another look at it. The question was the back of the left wrist. Well, Arad Stevens howling, but the forearm was not all the way down. So Pereira's two for two in our game, and Green Bay just went 0 for 1 on challenges. So no bonus for them eventually, and that cost them a timeout. And it brings up third down and five instead of third and 10 or 11. Skelton finds Fitzgerald and Fitzgerald is going to find the end zone for the touchdown. What an effort by Larry Fitzgerald. That's his fourth. 31 yards as Arizona's trying to climb back into it. You see the Cardinals, they go to a trip set bunch. They bunch those guys up, and because of that, then they release it, and it's easy to then turn a guy loose. Now Fitzgerald, they're in zone coverage, and he's able to find the hole within that zone, but after he catches the ball, this is where he was really good. I mean, some chances for Green Bay to keep him from scoring, but just determination on Fitzgerald's part of getting that all the way in for the touchdown. And just like that, it's a 10 point game in Green Bay. So, number four on the year. And this was a lot of effort by Fitzgerald after the catch. Well, you see the way they cross release that. And so it gets Fitzgerald up into the scene. Desmond Moses was the linebacker who you know, was responsible for that underneath coverage with help over the top. But Fitzgerald splits it, he makes the catch. And just as I said, great effort on his part being able to punch that in. That had to feel good for a guy that's been frustrated this season. Last year was ninth in the league at over 17 and a half yards per catch. He started this game 80th in the NFL at under 11 and a half yards per catch. That one good for 31 yards, a touchdown. And I know that the numbers aren't going to blow anybody away at the end of the game, but I have a feeling John Skelton has impressed you, Troy, with the way he's been able to hold up, hang in there, and some of the throws he's made under duress. Well, it's it's tough. I mean, can he play better? Absolutely he can play better, but he's got to have some help, and he hasn't gotten a lot of that. And whether it's him or Kevin Cobb, those other players around him have to be able to do their part. Here is Randall Cobb. Juggled the ball, almost lost it. We go back to the last time these two teams met, Packers and Cardinals in a 2009 wild card game. It became the highest scoring postseason game in league history. And it ended when Carlos Dansby scored the final touchdown in overtime. 
when Aaron Rodgers was stripped by Michael Adams, who's still on the team. Cardinals won by a score of 51 to 45. Takes them five weeks to score 51 points yeah. now. That is uh, that's ancient history as far as the Cardinals are concerned. And that was when they had a guy named Warner. That was his last year in the NFL at quarterback. So now Green Bay trying to answer starting at the 21. Cobb starts at the bottom of the screen and Rodgers keeps it. Throws it. Has a man that's Boykin. And the rookie who both McCarthy and Rodgers really like is good for six. Yeah, they like him. He was an undrafted free agent, and, and one of the real reasons for that because he was pretty productive there at Virginia Tech. But according to Mike McCarthy at the scouting combine, he, he ran a 4740, which for those that don't really know what that means, that I ran faster than that when I came out. So I, I was shocked. But they really like him and he runs good routes. He's a big guy and they think he's got a real future. Starks gets it running right. Starks is out to the 30. Gain of three, third and short coming up. Well, I think right now for the Cardinals defense, I mean, they've gotten a lot of accolades as a pretty good unit and, and have been absolved really of a lot of responsibility for what's happened here over the last four weeks. But, you know, this is a third and one, obviously, but if they're the defense that Ray Horton believes that they are, then this is a possession here when their offense went down and got the touchdown to cut this to 10 points. They, they've got to be able to make a stop. Green in the backfield, he gets it, and he was stopped. He did cross the 30, but he looks to be a half yard shy of a first down, and it's Dan Williams. The big nose tackle in there to stuff it. You see Kerry Rhodes, he's the safety, and he's the guy who then has to be able to make the play. Now he gets help on the inside, who comes off the block is big nose tackle Dan Williams, but Kerry Rhodes is there to clean it up and finish him off. That's an excellent job defensively by the Cardinals. This will be the third punt this quarter for Maste after not punting it at all in the first half. Under six and a half to go, and there's the stop you were talking about. And here is Patrick Peterson. Good punt by Maste. Hung it high, fair catch. Hauled in, inches inside the 25. Cardinals have it, more shoving after the play, no flags yet. Arizona with a football. Down. Victor Gonzalez coming off a strong baseball postseason. Putting that together in our production truck. So here are the Cardinals down by 10. Six to go, third quarter. Rod Stevens Howling right side gets to the edge, then goes upfield. Gets drilled by A.J. Hawk. And he is going to be marked out of bounds with enough for a first down. You know, I talked, Joe, about the inability for the Cardinals to really get many big plays. Prior to this game, during the four-game losing streak, they did not even have a play of 30 yards during those four weeks. And, and here today, I mean, think of their two touchdown drives that they had. They had the deep ball to Andre Roberts, which allowed them then to come away with the first touchdown. And then, of course, the Fitzgerald play, where a lot of that had to do with his determination. But two big plays on two different drives, and they come away with two touchdowns, and that's... That's really the key for this offense. Skelton throws too short for Stevens Howling after rushing the ball for only seven yards last week. Arizona's run it for 52 at a 3.7 yards per carry average. But it is Ken Wisenhunt, and that's really what Wisenhunt, truth be told, wants to do have a big back, run the ball. He did it in Pittsburgh. He's a Dan Henning guy. That's where he comes from, but they just don't have the personnel to do it. Yeah, Stevens Holland is not what I consider a big bat. <laughs> Second and ten. Housler makes the catch. Turns up field. He's got another Arizona first down. It's got a Kurt for a game break. Well, Peyton Manning had been picked off once in his previous five games. Cincinnati's got them twice today already. Oh, I have a little help on this one. Terrence Newman. With the interception, set up a touchdown by the Bengals. It's with 17 unanswered, and since he has a leading 20 to 17.
Joe, Troy, and Pam. I resisted the temptation to say hello, Newman. <laughs> well, thank you, Kurt and uh, Peyton Manning, coming off five straight 300-yard games. Has never lost to Cincinnati, but trailing there by three. Here's Steven Sally, good for five, brought down by Brad Jones, who is in his third week as the starting inside linebacker after Bishop was lost in the preseason. And D.J. Smith, the guy who took over for Bishop, was lost in the middle of October to a knee injury here against Houston. Well, he's played well for them too. I mean a smart guy very active. Good pass rusher. Second down and five. Play action from Skelton. Has protection finds Hausler. And Hausler lost his footing but he's got a big first down inside the 30. They'll mark him at the 28. As I was saying, I mean, he has not had a lot of great protection, but when he's had it today, he really has delivered some nice throws. And, you know, that time he's able to step up clean and, and deliver a ball to Hausler. Hausler is able to slide in. He's able to slide in then behind the linebackers. And here the Cardinals there are on the march. You know, I mean, they're down 10. Any kind of points here, you put the pressure right back on the Packers. That one good for 22 yards to Hausler. Skelton. Hits the fullback. That's Anthony Sherman. A small gain of three. Let's go down to Pam Oliver. Well, Joe, the Cardinals are making this drive as linebacker Clay Matthews is getting evaluated in the locker room. He has a quiet day. He did until he's got this hamstring injury now. His return is also questionable, which we said about 30 guys today. Yeah, it's uh, starting to pile up again for Green Bay as they are eyeing their bye week next weekend. Second down and seven. in motion Skelton keeps it has a wide open man that's Roberts and Andre Roberts will take it down to the 10 yard line they'll mark him down at the 11 14 yard completion and the Cardinals are right back knocking on the door again yeah you see Stevens Howell and the job that he does coming inside and really finishing off AJ Hawk last week against the 49ers he got shown when he got beat by Navarro Bowman, but he sticks his head in there, makes a nice block, and you heard John Skelton check out of the play. He went kill kill because he saw one on one outside with pressure inside. An excellent job of executing and delivering the ball on the money. Late clock winding down, so Ken Wisenhunt will have to spend a timeout. And it'll be first down and 10 with a ball at the 11. And while we have focused on this game here between the Cardinals and the Packers, we look again uh, around the NFC in particular and a team that's really been disappointing after a good start, the Philadelphia Eagles. And hard to believe Andy Reid in his 14th year as head coach of the Eagles is under fire. And this is a club that's under 500. Yeah, it's, it's not hard to believe when you consider how much they struggled last year when they went out and signed all those guys. A lot was expected, and, you know, that puts you in the hot seat when you don't do more than they were able to do last season. And, you know, they finished up relatively strong. We thought that was going to carry over certainly into this year, but uh, I think it's going to be tough on the, then on Monday night, but picture of inconsistency now for the last year and a half. First down. Arizona out of the shotgun Skelton end zone out of the reach of Floyd and Michael who has one touchdown and suffered through some early drops to his rookie season trying to get more in the rhythm that one out of his reach. Yeah I think that's a ball that that John Skelton would like to have back because Jaron McMillan was in coverage the rookie safety and he could have put in that ball pretty much anywhere and Michael Floyd would have likely been able to make a play on it. Now second down and ten. Four man rush. Skelton with a little pump fake and now finds Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald ran right through Tremont Williams leveled him with a shoulder. And we'll see where they mark it. About a yard shy of a first down. That was good for nine. So you talk about a guy finishing a play. 
I mean, he, he kind of ad libbed a little bit just to create a little bit of separation to get the ball, but then to finish that run off the way that he did, you don't see that kind of physicalness too many times by wide receivers. Cardinals can get a first down without a touchdown, third down and one. Stevens Howling, right side, ran into a wall and didn't get it. Mike Daniels was there. It's fourth down, and the Cardinals will have to attempt the field goal. That was a big stop. Well, it was a big stop, and the Cardinals are they are trying to get in behind the fullback, Anthony Sherman. It's just no movement whatsoever. The Packers, they hold their ground in an excellent job there on third and one of forcing the Cardinals to settle for a field goal. Chip shot from Feely, who was hit from 61. That's a career long. He did that against Buffalo on October 14th, and this is basically an extra point. And it's a seven-point game. In the aftermath of natural disasters like Superstorm Sandy, the American Red Cross provides life-saving services such as meals, shelter, and mobilizing resources, and workers nationwide. Visit redcross.org or text Red Cross to 90999 to give a $10 donation. They need it, and the people in the Northeast need it. Well, there's no doubt, and all the volunteers who are helping out there and their efforts on the East Coast and our prayers and thoughts are, are with those folks. And those volunteers, a lot of the first responders, as Jay Glazer reported on Fox NFL Sunday, treated to an NFL game today. Interesting games coming up, you know, in the NFC, and we could get to the AFC, and, and we'll try to before the end of the day. But in the NFC East, you got the Giants against the Steelers later this afternoon. You mentioned Philadelphia, New Orleans on Monday, and then Dallas with a big one at Atlanta tonight. Romo, 13 interceptions, the Cowboys minus 11 in the turnover ratio. And Romo coming off that four pick game that you witnessed at home against the Giants. Well if they're going to get it going I think tonight's going to have to be the night for them. Here's Tom. Little stutter step and he's knocked down at the 22. We will be in Philadelphia next Sunday with the Eagles and the Cowboys. There is our slate of games of Fox NFL doubleheader next week. America's game of the week, Cowboys and Eagles. After big games today and tomorrow for those two. Nice run by Green. And he runs into the arms of a former Packer, Paris Lennon, good for six. You know, we talked uh, on the previous possession about the Cardinals defensively and being able to come up with a stop after their Offense had gone down the field and gotten the touchdown, and now I think it's kind of the other way around as far as this Packers offense, and certainly Aaron Rodgers is doing it shorthanded. With Jordy Nelson going down in this game, and then of course Greg Jennings not in the lineup, but you know, right now they need to do something to kind of stop the momentum that the touchdown, no flags. Three starts in the backfield. He's going to run the seam route, and then you got Paris Lennon in the middle, who's responsible for running up the seam with him. And they go play action, and they get Lennon just looking in the backfield long enough that as Crabtree runs by him, he's not able to make up the ground. And a beautifully thrown ball, and like I said, <laughs> they need to do something to get the momentum changed, and create a big play of their own. That's a career long for Crabtree. 72 yards for the Packers. Their longest play from scrimmage. And Crabtree with a Lambeau leap probably looking for oxygen on his way as he got saluted and hugged and poured on by the fans.
You wanted something to stop the map tree the end of the third quarter. Prior to that, their fifth <laughs> possession of the quarter, they didn't have a first down, and that thing changed this game dramatically. He can go out and get another tattoo after that catch. <laughs> he can. I don't know if he's in the room. Let's draw it up there, Mr. Analyst. Well, you're going to see these uh, these routes here on the go routes is what frees up ultimately Crabtree going down the middle because those outside routes, they tie up the safety, and then it's just one-on-one -on -one with Crabtree on Paris Lennon, as I said earlier. And, you know, Crabtree, who came into this game with just five receptions, yet he was averaging over 20 yards per reception. So although he doesn't catch a lot of balls, when he does catch them, they're usually for pretty good gains. Of course, this is going to raise the old average yeah. yards per catch even higher. Well, when we talked to Aaron Rodgers, you know, he had a little meeting with Jermichael Finley during the week, and that's all well and good. They're still waiting for Finley to get back into form. But he likes D.J. Williams, a second-year player out of Arkansas, fifth-round pick last year. LaRod Stevens Howling loses a yard and a half. And Brad Jones is there to make the stop. And so while everybody talks about Finley at the tight end position, keep an eye on D.J. Williams. And the other guy he mentioned was Tom Crabtree, good for 72 on that last play. Yeah, it's also Tom Crabtree's birthday today, so that's a pretty good birthday present that Aaron Rodgers presented to him. 27 years old today. Second down and 11. The Cardinals come up with an answer. Skelton throws, has a man, and that is dropped by Fitzgerald as he tried to adjust to that underthrown ball. It's third down and 11. So having to make that long walk back to the puddle, that goes down as a drop, but would have been a Sensational catch. Third and 11. Three man rush. Hausler needs to make a couple more moves as he's brought down short of a first down. MD Jennings there to make the stop. Two yards shy of a first down. On comes the punt team for Arizona. Yeah, we've seen that quite a bit. For the Cardinals in, in their attempt, they've been in some long down situations on third down, and a lot of those times they've had to throw it short of the markers and hope that they can pick them up. They've been able to do that a few times here in this game, but they come up short on that last play. Zastadil has had a couple of bad punts. This one takes a couple of bounces. Arizona bounces and is tapped down to 31. 41 yard punt, nothing on the return. Aaron Rodgers back to the field, up by 14. Aaron Rodgers, the completion percentage is under 50%, but the rest of the number is very good, including a four touchdown pass day. On first down, Starks pushes the pile forward. Good, strong run. Good for five. Darnell Dockett on the tackle. Aaron Rodgers, this is the tenth time the regular season he's had a four touchdown pass game. He has won the previous nine. He also has one in the postseason. I thought it was real interesting in visiting with him, Joe, about you know how confident he is about this team and, and how much he likes this team. You know, we're around the league. Everybody's looking at the Packers saying, you know, man, I, I don't know. They just don't seem to really have it going the way that they're used to having it. And, but yet Rodgers is very confident. Good run by Starks. Out to the 40. A yard shy of first down. The only downside today, again, going into the bye week, each team is headed into their bye week. Jordy Nelson left with a right ankle injury. Brian Balaga, their starting right tackle, out with a bad hip. That could funnel down into the knee with a weird hyperextension. And then the hamstring injury suffered by Clay Matthews. Well, those are all significant players. And, you know, 
Clay Matthews has dealt with the hamstring before. I mean, that's been a recurring thing for him. I think the question is how bad is it to Balaga and how bad is it for Jordy Nelson? Here starts running right. He has to lunge, attempting to pick up the first down, and he is short. Could be a three and out and a big one for the Arizona defense. And that's what it will be as Maste will head on to the field. Good work by Ken Wisenhunt's defensive group. Well, it sure was, you know, because two possessions left in this game. Peterson can score quickly. Four last year for touchdowns, but Maste hits it high. Peterson a chance to run. He is dragged to the ground after crossing the 25 yard line. 12 yard return. Sean Richardson on the tackle. A solid tackle. And they've been playing better and better. Almost came away with his first pick. Well, he had a great opportunity. It was a ball that Skelton. Trying to fit in there, really didn't have a chance to, but House is right there to make a play on it. And a, a guy who they really anticipated was going to be the starter when this season began, but he had some injuries that kept him out of the lineup. And you know, now since he's just kind of gotten back into things, he has not taken over the starting job, even though Sam Shields is out himself. Out with a bad knee. Fast caught, that's Floyd. Floyd was the intended receiver on that previous pass. It was broken up. Good for eight. Third and two coming up. Plenty of time left. As Michael Floyd had to be happy with that win yesterday by the Irish over Pitt. Third down and two. Walden bringing down the rod Steven Towling immediately a loss of six and Walden has got a pick in this game now makes a good stop on third down that's really an excellent job by Walden of recognizing it Massey tries to go low on him which is what you want to do and keep him out of the play and you do it primarily so that he won't get his hands up if he's rushing up the field but Walden fends him off and then they will make a nice play in the open field. Zastadil with his best of the day drives Cobb back inside the 10 eventually. Nowhere to go, gets a block. And Randall Cobb did all he could. Knocked down at the 19, 65 yard punt. Green Bay has it up by 14. Randall Cobb is almost up to 200 total yards on the day. Two more touchdown catches as Starks tries the right side. And Starks is really getting into the groove. He could take over that top spot. In fact, I would expect him to, even though they like Alex Green. This guy, as we mentioned earlier, such a big part of their Super Bowl run back in 2010. And if he could just stay healthy, who knows what he could do? Yeah, he's a, he's a physical runner, and on that play there, he he really does a good job of being able to get all the way onto the edge and up the sideline because the Cardinals they got pressure, and yet he was able to bounce it. But yeah, I mean he's he's a physical guy, and and he can create some positive yardage once he gets going. It's his longest run of the year, 14 yards. Why not give it to him again? He cuts back up field. Takes it to the 35 as he gets three. Knocked down by Paris Lennon. Well, the one thing we do know about Mike McCarthy as a play caller is that, you know, he'd like to run the ball better than they have, but the important thing for him has always been just making sure that they get enough running attempts to maintain some type of balance and keep Aaron Rodgers from getting hit a lot as a passer. And even over the last three weeks when they weren't running the ball really all that effectively, they were still averaging about 25, 26 carries a game. Starks at 4.8 yards per carry. 
This will cost him a yard. Paris Lennon again. Patrick O'Neill again. Here's a game break. All right, Joe, thanks a lot. Broncos and the Bengals. Another fourth quarter comeback for Peyton Manning. 14 unanswered points. He hits Eric Decker for the second time today. Manning, 291 yards and three touchdowns. And the lead, 31 to 20. Joe Troy and Pam. A record of four and three on their way to five and three. Peyton Manning, who we had a chance to see during the preseason. That arm, the nerve issue has gotten stronger and stronger. See who it's against. Neutral zone infraction, number 54, defense, five yard penalty, field third down. That was Quentin Groves across from now right tackle T.J. Lang. Yeah, you're going to see T.J. Lang. I, <laughs> I always like it. Those linemen, when they come out, they want to make sure that official knows who, who was responsible. <laughs> Lang got a five-year extension during camp, and he's the guy that took over at left guard for Darren College, who's in that spot for the last two seasons for the Cardinals. They like him a lot. Brings up third and three. Pass is juggled and caught somehow by Randall Cobb. They're going to mark him down right at the marker. It looks to be enough. But we'll get a measurement. What a catch. This is unbelievable. And the ball's behind him. And, you know, when it got tipped there, you see Kerry Rhodes thought he may have an opportunity on an interception. And Cobb's able to then get both hands on it and make a catch in what looks to be a first down. So even closer to a 200 yard day for Randall Cobb. How good is our line. Good enough first down. It was pretty obvious in visiting with Aaron Rodgers. I mean just how much he likes Randall Cobb and as I said I mean they've used him in the backfield they put him in the slot he's had to play a little more outside because of the injuries and then of course as a return man and he has helped pick up the slack in the slot position because that's an area where Greg Jennings played so much in their three wide receiver sets and it'll be interesting to see then how they use Randall Cobb in that role because he has been so effective you know if and when Greg Jennings comes back. Rodgers keeps it, rolls right, and incomplete. Guess who? Randall Cobb again. Adams defending. This week on Fox College Saturday, it's a doubleheader, beginning with 11th-ranked Oregon State, battling 14th-ranked Stanford. Then the second-ranked K-State Wildcats look to keep their national title hopes alive as they take on TCU. Coverage of Fox College football begins Saturday at 2.30 Eastern, 11.30 Pacific on Fox. Second down and 10. Here's Starks. Not much. Third and long coming up. In fact, Aaron Rodgers, to go back to what you said before we talked about Fox College football, he said when Greg Jennings comes back, you could see a lot of four wide receiver sets with both Jennings and Cobb on the inside. James Jones and Jordy Nelson on the outside. And they could be really tough to stop. Well, there's no doubt. And, you know, now you go back and wonder, you know, I'm, I'm interested in, in hearing, you know, when this game's over next week, you know, the severity of the injury to Jordy Nelson. I mean, that could be a huge blow right now for the Cardinals if they're going to climb back into this have any chance they got to make a stop here defensively Cobb starts this one in the backfield they toss it to him and Randall Cobb won't get it brought down by Dockett Groves was there as well a gain of six it's fourth down the punt team comes on for Green Bay pretty good idea though there by Mike McCarthy in terms of not throwing it and having an incompletion and not taking more time off this clock with it being a 14 point lead you know, give themselves a chance to pick it up with the toss back to Cobb and if they don't make it which they didn't they at least give this ball back to Arizona under five minutes to play big weapon Patrick Peterson has been held in check. Actually, as long for the year as 26 yards. Team know, teams know 
just how dangerous he is after four punt returns for touchdowns as a rookie. Gets rid of it. Peterson has a little room, taking it in at the 10. Cuts up field, but can't make the 20. Brett Good, who is the long snapper, was there to make the stop. Cardinals have it. Fox. Four and a half to go. Arizona trying to snap a four-game losing streak. They got a lot of work to do. Skelton completes Fitzgerald. Can't get around Tremont Williams. Gets eight. And now flag flies. We've seen a lot of this stuff after the whistle. And a late flag with these two teams shoving. Might have been a late. After the play was over, personal foul, number 72, offense. 15 yard, half the distance to the goal, second down. So there you go, Rich Ornberger making a second consecutive start. Guilty of that personal foul, and that marches the ball back just outside the 12. You look at where they're at right now with four, just over four minutes to play. I mean, Skelton, whether he has time or whether it's clean down the field, I mean, he's going to have to start trying to make some plays down the field in big chunks because he's not going to be able to afford to just complete six, seven-yard passes and do anything. Juggled the snap. Pass is complete. That's Floyd. And Floyd is out to the 22. Third down and six. Skelton fires out of the reach of Andre Roberts. It's fourth down. And as the punt team started to head onto the field, they stop and come back to the sideline. Ken Wisenhunt is electing to go for it, down by 14 with under four to go. Well, that's the only chance that he really has. And you know, it's right here because if they don't make the play, then the Packers get it, and then it's a three possession game. And so it all comes down here to fourth down and keeping this drive alive. Extra men on a blitz. Skelton. Sideline pass is caught for a huge first down by Michael Floyd. Real good coverage, but a good throw and a great catch. Yeah, it was a really nice throw. I mean, it's good coverage on the outside, but the ball was placed perfectly high. Well, Floyd 6-2, and House isn't able to turn around and even try to locate the ball. And it's just a great job of getting the ball down the field. Of course, you're thinking first down, but they not only get the first down, but they get a big chunk of yardage as well. About 37 yards on fourth down and six. Here is Andre Roberts. He's got another first down. He gets a hit late. As Roberts is going to be marked down as that ball went firing out of bounds with a nine yard play. Well he made a mistake right here. He's got to go out of bounds. You know and he keeps it in play. He wasn't going to get any more yardage out of that. Ball got knocked out but he had a chance to, to get as much as he could get out of bounds and stop the clock. The ball ends up stopping anyway because the ball was knocked out on the fumble. He lost the first down because of it. Pass is broken up. So now third down and one. It was Burnett in coverage on Larry Fitzgerald. And it's third down and really less than a yard, about half a yard. So a 300 yard day for John Skelton, but not enough to this point. They got to get the first down first. And Stevens Howling won't get it. Losing yardage all the way back to the 35 yard line a loss of three and now another fourth down coming up. The two guards just get absolutely blown up Rich Ornberger and then Darren College I mean right back into the lap.
Steven Talion just had no opportunity whatsoever. I mean, that goes to all those that think that because you've got a yard, you run the ball and you pick it up automatically. It's not always that easy. So another fourth down, it's fourth and four. Ford got his hand on the ball. We'll take a look at it. Looks like you couldn't tell if he got a hand on it or not, but tight coverage, obviously, in trying to fit that into Andre Roberts. Here's the third down play to Stevens Howling. You know, when you've got the guards, the pressure that the Packers provided, just a great job of penetrating and not allowing the Cardinals to pick up that first down with, at that time, was third and one. Casey Hayward has factored more and more into the Green Bay secondary, a guy who had 13 interceptions his last two years at Vanderbilt. And he started this day tied for third in the NFL with four interceptions. He broke up that fourth down throw. And now with just two timeouts remaining for Arizona, they want to hand off to Starks, who gets dragged down with a horse collar by Quentin Groves. Personal foul, horse collar tackle, number 54, defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. Inside the shoulder pads, and that is classic horse collar tackle. That's 15 yards and a first down with 2.14 left. Starks, who's been battling injuries, is happy that he gets up without a limp after that. Coming up on the two-minute warning. Flip, 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 flip. We need team. We need to go. Here's Starks left side. Cuts up and runs right into the chest of Adrian Wilson. And Arizona will use one of their two remaining timeouts. Take a look at what's facing Green Bay. They've got the bye week coming up, hoping to get healthy, at least healthier. They're at Detroit, at the Giants, at home against Minnesota, at home against Detroit. So a lot inside their own division. A big game at the Giants on the 25th. And just to finish that, after that second Detroit game, they finish at Chicago, which will be, you have to think, huge. At home against Tennessee at Minnesota. Yeah, the, the, the fact that the Packers won that first meeting with Chicago, I mean, could be huge as we go through this season. And then, if, of course, as you said, the second meeting being in Chicago. Dockett makes that play on Starks. A gain of two and the final timeout taken by Arizona. It's hard to hard to imagine that game at Chicago not being a, a really huge game if Chicago continues to do what they've done and then of course Green Bay and you know, a lot of teams around the league with a lot of injuries and, and the Packers are certainly no exception and as we pointed out a, a number of key injuries in this game and in I guess we'll find out after the bye next week just how many of those players are able to come back and contribute. So Ken Wisenhunt's team has this. It doesn't get easier. They have their bye week, then they're at Atlanta. So here they are in danger of dropping their fifth straight after a 4-0 start. And then they're staring at the only undefeated team at the moment in the NFL, Atlanta, who's playing later tonight at home against Dallas. And that could be a six game losing streak. Unless they come firing out of their bye week with a big one at the Falcons. On third down passes behind Cobb. It's fourth down. Two minutes left. At Lambeau Field. Green Bay will punt. Arizona will get it down by 14. Pepsi post game show is coming up at the conclusion of this one. Randall Cobb 12 touches 202 yards as his breakout season continues here in his second year in the NFL number 18 for the Packers and they've needed every bit of it. Peterson muscle this one is picked up by Jared Bush. You can't advance a muff punt. So they're going to mark Bush down at the two. 
It belongs to Green Bay. Bush came away with it. And the ball will be at the two as Patrick Peterson tried to make something happen and didn't make the catch. Well, you see, he's trying to locate where Bush was to see if he was going to be able to get a return. And so, you know, he took his eyes off the ball a couple different times. Now, it appeared that he was able to, to relocate it. The ball just simply goes right through his arms. And now the, the, the Packers, they can just take a knee and run this thing out. All right, so what did we learn here today? The Green Bay Packers who came in over their last five games averaging 30 points per game. They're right there at that mark again after the first three games, just 19 points per game. And even though Aaron Rodgers doesn't have all his weapons, I mean, his two big guys on the outside aren't there. And Jordy Nelson and Greg Jennings, they are still really tough to slow down. Yeah, no, I, I think they're they're really tough still. But I didn't get the impression today that, that you know, they're still hitting on all cylinders even right. without those guys. Yeah. So, I mean, there's still room for improvement. But this is a nice win for them going into their bye week. It's a muff punt. Ball belongs to Green Bay. Up by 14 on the turnover. They want to make sure that this ball hit Patrick After Peterson. After the play, the really is confirmed. The ball hit the receiver's right thigh. First down for Green Bay. We had one look at it right here where you can see it blown up. That looks like it glances right there off the right thigh of Patrick Peterson. Again, you can't advance, advance a muffed punt had he caught it run with it fumbled it that's a different situation so instead of a touchdown for Jared Bush it's just a recovery at the two and the Packers are happy to win this game by 14 the crowd isn't they want another score <laughs> how about that 179 rushing yards today and they welcome, for the most part, James Starks back into the mix, and I thought he was impressive, as was Alex Green running the ball, and when they couldn't, Aaron Rodgers showed his athleticism and showing what he can do on the ground. It's It's been a long time, really, I mean, since they've run the ball as effectively and as efficiently as they did today. I mean, as you said, Aaron Rodgers, you know, he obviously makes those numbers look probably better than they, they really are, but... But yet those guys ran the ball well. They had some nice big runs. But that took a lot of the pressure off of this passing game, there's no doubt. Mike McCarthy's attention will turn from this game to the bye week and then to the health of those guys he lost today and Clay Matthews, Jordy Nelson, who was iffy at best coming in. He made the start because of the bad hamstring those were the questions he leaves with a right ankle injury and then they're starting right tackle Brian Balaga left with a hip injury. Well as Mike McCarthy likes to say I mean he preaches to these players that it's the next man up I mean eventually you run out of men you know but he does a great job of not allowing the injuries to be an excuse for performance. This is such a strong organization from Mark Murphy the club president to Ted Thompson. The GM they find a lot of street free agents that really add to what the Packers do. And then they've got that guy their first round pick in 2005 out of Cal. The man who took over for Brett Favre and the reigning MVP in the NFL. He was good again today. That is the end of the 72 yarder to Tom Crabtree. A four.